So what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. For today I'm gonna to be talking about how I passed the CompTIA Security Plus exam. So for my beginners, this is an entry level IT slash cybersecurity certification. So today I'm gonna to be talking about what I did to pass the exam with what I used, what the test is actually like, as well as just some general study habits that I hope can help you guys. So if you are taking the exam for the first time, all right, if you're, this is your first time on the channel, or if you return to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as well as that notification bell, all right? I make military videos, I make IT videos, as well as just some finance, life, anything that we can do to help each other get through life. This is Life with Kev. I welcome, to the, I welcome you to the channel, and I appreciate you watching. Now let's get into the video. To live in the present, you know? <laughs> make a list of dollars. Appreciate you guys. You and your side. Mike, do a boost. Mike, Amanda, with me. All right. So for my people returning to the channel, y'all already know that I'm in the military, U.S. Air Force. So getting the Sec Plus certification was actually a requirement for my job in communications. All right, so all of my guys in comm or cyber, I'm talking about uh, cyber surety, client systems, uh, knowledge ops, uh, programming, what else is there? Cyber transport systems, RF transmissions, all of those jobs, you guys are gonna be required to get Sec Plus just for the uh, security of what we do, all right? But not only is the Security Plus good for the military and is important in the military, but this is also a certification that you can take into the to the outside world. I would say that it doesn't have as big of a way as some other certifications. Um, and it's always been told to me that if you get Sec Plus and you only have Sec Plus on your resume when you're trying to go into the civilian world, you know you got to do better. You was you know stack up maybe your uh, CCNA, your CC, your CSSP, some Microsoft Cloud certifications and whatnot just to really pad your resume. But Security Plus is a great entry level IT slash cybersecurity certification. All right. And now we say entry level, but for anybody that doesn't or really hasn't been in IT in the first place, which is similar to what I was, you know, it's kind of deep, you know. Uh, coming in to the military, I had a bit of experience making websites. I knew some programming languages, you know, I knew HTML, I knew CSS. Um, I had learned a bit of C++, I did school before. So I had a bit of, uh, of this type of knowledge, but not everybody has that. And there's people that had way more than me. You know, I had no idea really how a server or a switch worked or about networking. So for my people that don't have a lot of IT experience before taking your Sec Plus exam, I would say start preparing. And this is a life lesson that I started to take into my own life even before I started doing things like this but it's to start preparing before you have to be prepared, right? So for my military guys, you guys are gonna learn this stuff in your job, but also start learning about this stuff now. If your test isn't for another three months, start learning about it now, start reading about it now. That way you don't have to just try to cram a bunch of information into your head, but you're actually learning concepts. That way, a lot of these word problems and difficult problems that are on your exam, it's not just uh, trying to dump your brain, but you are understanding the concepts and understanding how to break down these problems, all right? So my test was in February. For a lot of the military people, they'll put you on a class, it's about a week long class. I knew that wasn't gonna be enough for me, okay? So what I did was I started, my class was in February. They put me in, they had the, the class was in February and I tested at the end of the class. So it was a week long class. I got to base here and started studying in about October, all right? Just so that I knew that I could understand the real field of cybersecurity, all right? Coming in, I didn't really know what a server was. I didn't know what a switch was. I didn't know about networking and all these types of things. So I told myself I have to learn these things. So I took my time to do them. Um, and like I said, that's just a life concept that I take to heart nowadays. It's to start preparing before you have to prepare, right? So it's whether if you're taking a PT test, you know, I'm gonna start running now and getting in shape now instead of waiting for that date to creep up on me and then I'm trying to scramble and get ready, right? I wanna perform my best. I wanna make sure that I guarantee myself a win. 
or in this case, guarantee myself a pass on this exam. So I'm gonna start preparing now, right? So what I did was I just started to read, and this is my first thing when I get into what I used, I would just read my textbook a few days out the week for a couple hours and take notes, really make sure I understood everything. And as I went through, I would look things up that I didn't know, all right? But moving into the next segment of what I used to study. The first one was the Security Plus 601 CompTIA textbook, all right? And I'm gonna leave as much as I can in the description in terms of links of where you can get these. Some of these textbooks you might have to purchase, but I'll leave as much information as I can about where to get these materials, all right? So the 601 textbook, it's 2022 right now, early in 2022, I used the 601 exam. That's what I took, all right? I don't know what version that you'll have by the time you're watching this video, but this is everything based off of 601. So I took the 601 textbook, and like I said, I would make sure that I would write down everything I did, uh, everything that I was learning about. I would just read the whole textbook. So I told you I started about four months ahead and I got through maybe like three quarters of the book. <laughs> I'll stay over the past just by picking things from other stuff, but it's a long textbook. So I do advise to, you know, get ahead on it. And everything that I didn't know, I would look up. So that goes into my next is YouTube videos. Anytime you see a concept that you don't understand, Look it up on YouTube. There's a ton of videos on this IT stuff, cybersecurity, networking, all these things that you can learn more about and really understand each concept. I know personally, I learn better by watching something and seeing it play out. With a lot of this stuff, it's kind of difficult because it's just words you're reading, but to actually understand, I like to see a diagram. So that works for me with YouTube videos. I recommend Professor Messer, all right? He is like the CompTIA Sec Plus guru when it comes to this stuff. So if you guys find him on YouTube, be sure to check him out. Uh, he explains things very well with all of this stuff. The next is the professional master exam guide, all right? You're gonna want as much exposure to the types of questions that you're gonna see on this exam. Half of this test is knowledge of the field, and the other half is just being able to really read these questions. There's some complicated questions that you really have to break down. Okay, a lot of them will try to trick you in different types of ways. So when, the more that you see the types of questions that will be on your test, the better you'll do. So I recommend the exam guide. I'll put the link in the description by Professor Mesher, which has performance-based questions and multiple choice questions that you might see on the exam. Another one is exam compass, link below. It is just multiple choice exam questions. All right, both of these are just to really get that practice of seeing a question and being able to pick out the things that you need to know, the certain keywords that you need to know to figure out what type of attack, what type of issue that they're talking about and be able to answer that question correctly or eliminate choices that you know are wrong, all right? Another thing that I used, and like I said, this is to really understand the field of cybersecurity is I listen to podcasts and I have two important ones, CyberWire Daily, and Darknet Diaries. The first is CyberWire Daily. This is a daily news update about cyber-related issues happening around the world. So when we talk about Ukraine cyber attacks, Russia, we talk about uh, China, we talk about uh, Facebook, Twitter, different supply chain issues going on around the world. When I listen to this stuff, and it's a daily thing, I didn't get time to listen to it every day, but I would at least once or twice a week, just to understand that this stuff is real, you know? Stuff like this really happens around the world. So when you get to listen to this stuff, you understand how it translates from your textbook to the real world, as well as getting familiar with the vocab and with some concepts, because you're actually seeing it play out or hearing it play out in real life and how it's affecting the rest of the world. The second one I'm listening to is Darknet Diaries. Both of these podcasts can be found on Apple or or Android uh, stores. So I would check both of these out. But the second one is Darknet Diaries. This one is cool. It's a bit of a more interesting one. It's a storytelling one where they will sit down an expert or somebody who has done cyber crimes and pick their brain. So I got to learn a lot about attacks from the mind of an attacker. All right, each episode is about an hour long. So if you have a long car ride or a run, sometimes I would plug in my headphones and I would just listen to these stories, man. They're really cool to listen to. And like I said, they help you understand this whole field. All right, the more I listen to this type of stuff, the more I was like, wow, this is a, 
a much greater issue, a much greater feel than I originally thought, you know? And of course, these all helped me on the exam. So along with textbooks and study guides, along with practice questions, along with podcasts, I will go to group study. If you are in an environment where you can talk to people and you know that there's other people taking this exam, link with them, you know? Talk and go through these practice questions. That way you know how other people see the question and you guys can break down and explain to each other. It's always good to know it yourself, but to be able to explain it to somebody else or have them explain it to you is really how you're able to learn and cement things into your mind, okay? It's one thing to know it, but to be able to teach it, you gotta really know it. Or to just debate between each other on some why you think this is this and why you think this is this. All right, I had a group of guys for my unit that we were able to collab and come together and really study for a few days just to understand a lot of this stuff a little better. And that helped me a lot. So if you guys have that opportunity, I would take that as well. All right, so we talked about what I did before my exam, what I used to study and how I study. Now we're gonna talk about the actual test. All right, so walking into your test, even the night before, make sure you're doing all those healthy habits, all right? If you know you haven't prepared for something, Spend a little more time. Just make sure you are completely confident walking into that room. All right, as well as make sure you have a good night's sleep. At least eight hours, eat a good breakfast, get some oatmeal on your plate, um, and just come in ready, confident, ready to go. All right, your test, the CompTIA exam has no more than 90 questions on each exam. Your first four or so questions are gonna be your performance-based questions. These are questions that are gonna talk about you know, how to configure a firewall, um, drag and drop type things, as well as just matching terms with definitions, okay? So those are your first four or your performance-based PBQ questions. The rest of your 80 or so are gonna be your multiple choice. And these are gonna cover all concepts. It's a randomized, you never know what is gonna come up. But CompTIA has a pool of what I've heard about 3,000 questions, all right? So for whatever you study, just know that there's a pool of about 3,000 questions. I've had people take this exam multiple times and it's never been the same exam. So that's why I think it's very important to not only you know, study answers, but to know the concepts. That way when you see a problem, it's not you're looking for an answer, but you actually understand what's going on, right? So like I said, you're gonna have about 90 questions, 90, maybe a little bit less questions and you're gonna have 90 minutes, an hour and a half to take this exam, okay? So do the math, you'll see about how much time that you have. I'm gonna give you about two minutes, maybe a minute per question, not to speed things up, but just make sure that you guys are looking for keywords and such like that, okay? Now that's mainly what I have for this video. Like I said, this is a great entry level. This helped me learn a lot about IT about networking, about security. And, you know, as motivated me to keep wanting to learn, especially as I see the issues that happen in the real world, you know? So I hope this guys, is, I hope this video was able to help you guys out some. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment. Please be sure to hit me up on Instagram, OG Kev. Hit me with any questions that you guys have about what I did or what I think would help. And if you guys know something that I might not know, feel free to shoot me some info, I'm always willing to learn. But on top of that, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, man. This family is growing and I appreciate everybody that's watching and everybody that's joining us, okay? So like that said, that's it for today, man. Y'all be easy, stay blessed, peace.